Hi and welcome to this lesson where we are going to apply some of Newton's laws that we now learned um, with a special uh, circumstance where we actually have a, an object that is lying on an incline. So imagine I have a, a surface, here's my surface, and on that surface, doesn't matter whether it's smooth or rough, I have an object on that surface. So there's my object on the surface. and intuitively we know that this thing is going to slide down the surface but we want to go and figure out why what are all the forces that are acting on it and um, what is the effect why is it sliding down at what rate is it sliding down so uh, before we get there let's just look at the things that we've learned so far okay so far there's a few things that we are going to use in this and because we're going to use it let's just remind ourselves about them uh, one thing that we learned were components of forces components of forces and you might recall that a component of a force is um, two or more elements that add up to a force so if I have this force and I take that is my force then these can be components to that force okay all of these forces can be a few components of that force they just all add up and then the net effect is this resultant force but obviously that's not going to be a lot of help what will be very helpful is to divide it up into two components where the two components make a perpendicular angle with each other so we have oh, that one's a bit far Let's go. we've got one with the horizontal for example and one with the vertical okay and then if we know what that angle is we saw that then this is the opposite side this is the adjacent side and that is the hypotenuse in other words the magnitude of the force let's call that F the magnitude of the force represents the hypotenuse so how can we get these components let's call it F in the X direction and F in the Y direction. Well, you might recall that now, for example, if we want F in the Y direction, we're using the opposite and the hypotenuse. And that, in terms of sine, cos, and tan, so we have sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, we're only going to use these two though. But with them in mind, we can see opposite and hypotenuse is what I'll use to find Fy. So if I have that sine of theta is equal to Fy, that's the component in the y direction, divided by F. That's the hypotenuse, the magnitude of the force. And then if we just multiply both sides with an F, then we get to solve Fy and we see that the component in the y direction is equal to F sine theta. Okay, that's the one. And the other one would be cos. We see that cos of theta is equal adjacent. Adjacent is now the component, the magnitude in the x direction, divided by the hypotenuse, the magnitude of the force. And again, multiplying with F on both sides gives me that f of x is equal to f times cos of theta okay and these two forces would be two components that when we add them together with vector addition we would get the original force in other words f is equal to and this is vector addition so let's do that f x plus f y Okay, now that's the one thing that we learned. Another thing that we also learned was that the resultant vector, okay, another important thing is the resultant vector is equal to the sum of all the applied forces. Okay, the sum of all the applied forces acting on an object would give us the resultant actually the vector sum not just the, sum, the vector sum of all the applied forces would give us the resultant vector or another way of looking at this is that the resultant vector is mass times acceleration this we saw was Newton's second law I'll just uh, shorten it with n to L 
Okay, um, along with this, another thing that we learned was weight. Okay, we learned a few things about weight. One thing that we learned about weight is that it's always uh, vertically down, and we can calculate weight by taking the mass of the object multiply by the gravitational acceleration. Okay, that we learned about mass. We also learned about a special force. Let's do that in the blue a special force called the normal force or perpendicular force perpendicular force is the force perpendicular 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 to the surface okay so this is actually a force that is applied and applied by the surface. It's what the surface is applying to an object uh, by the surface. Okay, so we know that if um, the we know that when we are putting a force against the wall, okay, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. The wall is also putting a force on us, and the force that the wall is putting on us would be a perpendicular force okay um, or if we have an object on a on a surface and that's where it's going to uh, actually going to come in here is when we have our surface that we were talking about earlier there's our surface we have our object on our surface and now the object has a weight that is downwards but it's not moving downwards according to Newton's second law okay it is supposed to have an acceleration in the direction of the resultant force which means there is no resultant force which means that the resultant force is actually zero that means there is an equal but opposite force offered by the surface and that would be 90 degrees with the surface as well okay um what else did we learn well we also learned that um if a force is acting on an object, along with this one actually, when we have a resultant force here, the object would accelerate. The object will accelerate in the direction of the force. In other words, we learned from Newton's first law when no force is acting um, on an object, then that object will either stay at rest or move at a constant uh, velocity. But if an, uh, uh, there is a resultant force acting on an object, it will accelerate in the direction of the force. Okay, now that's also going to be important. Why is it going to be important? Well, let's go back here. Okay, We know that when we have an object on an incline that is steep enough, that object is going to start to move down, but not just move down, actually accelerate downwards. The longer we leave it, the faster it will travel down, which means that it is accelerating down the slope, which means that this acceleration is caused by a resultant force. Now, because there's a resultant force on this object, we want to know what it, what is it a result of? What are the forces acting on it? And if we know what the forces are that's acting on it, we can go and calculate this resultant force. So let's go and see what are the forces that's acting on it using all of this knowledge that we've now uh, put together.